I'm Perry Romanowski, and in this video, I'm going to tell you about the 10 different types of cosmetic formulations that every cosmetic formulator must know how to produce. Plus, if you watch to the end, I'll show you one of my best tricks. <laughs> if you're serious about being a well-rounded expert cosmetic chemist, these are all the types of formulas you'll have to be able to create. But first, I wanted to remind you of our upcoming online formulation course, Practical Cosmetic Formulation. This is a five-month course that teaches you everything you need to know to create safe, effective, and stable cosmetic formulations. You'll learn how to speak like an expert cosmetic formulator, get answers to questions about cosmetic raw materials, and even learn what it takes to start a cosmetic product line. There really is nothing like this kind of training on the market. It's all done online and you don't have to spend a lot of money on traveling expenses to take multi-day courses across the country. You can go through the lessons whenever it's convenient for you. All right, now on to the top 10 cosmetic formulation types. While there are literally thousands of different types of cosmetic products, there are actually only 10 different types of cosmetic formulas. Here is a brief overview of those types, including what they are, how they're made, and when you might use them. As a formulating chemist, you should make it a point to learn to make each type, even if your company doesn't currently make these particular products. So here are the 10 cosmetic product forms which we're going to go through. These include solutions, creams and emulsions, lotions, ointments and pastes, suspensions, tablets, powders, gels, sticks, and aerosols. So let's start with solutions. Solutions are the simplest type of cosmetics formulas, and they're used for a wide range of products, including shampoos, body washes, hand cleansers, colognes, etc. They are homogeneous mixtures of soluble ingredients. And to make them, you simply fill your container with the main diluent, it's usually water, then mix the rest of the ingredients into it. Sometimes warming the system slightly will increase the speed at which you can make them. They're a relatively easy formula to make, and typically they're very stable. The next type are creams and emulsions. The majority of cosmetics use raw materials that are not compatible, so a cream or emulsion is required. Emulsions are pseudo-stable mixtures of immiscible liquids dispersed in another liquid. They are used for products like hand moisturizers, makeup, hair conditioners, sunscreens, etc. And to create them, you need three formula components, including an oil phase, an aqueous phase, and an emulsifier to keep them together. The formulas are made by heating up the oil and water phases separately, mixing them together along with the emulsifier when they're hot, and then cooling them down with thorough mixing. The result is a cream with tiny particles dispersed within the diluent phase. They're excellent for delivering products that are not compatible with water to the surface of skin and hair. Now creams are not always appropriate for some applications because they are too heavy or greasy. In these cases, the lotion form is used. Lotions are essentially really thin creams. They're used for facial moisturizers, leave-in hair conditioners, and moisturizing cleansers, among other things. Since these are actually emulsions, you make them the same way you would a cream. They are generally easier because you don't have to worry about the emulsion getting thick enough as it cools down. The next type of formulation is a suspension. Suspensions are another form of delivering incompatible ingredients. Unlike creams, they are typically clear products with visible particles like gelatin beads or inorganic minerals, for example titanium dioxide, suspended throughout. They are used for sunscreens, hand washes, or shampoos. Now to create suspensions, you need to include a polymer or clay that gives the formula some internal suspending structures. Ingredients like carbamer or bentonite clays are useful. Ointments and pastes are super thick products used for things like hairdressing and medicated skin products. Usually they are anhydrous, which means they contain no water, and they are typically sticky and greasy. Some common ingredients used to create pastes include petrolatum, lanolin, or dimethicone. Making an ointment or paste is a simple matter of heating up the raw materials and rapidly mixing them together until they are dispersed. The nice thing about an ointment or paste, since they are anhydrous, it usually doesn't require as much of a preservative as some of the other formulations. 
Another product form that is often used for creating color cosmetics is the tablet. These are physically blended solids that are held together by being pressed into shape. Now typically you'll need special equipment to create these types of products and so that makes them generally more expensive and more difficult for the home cosmetic chemist to make. And speaking of powders, powders are the next type of product form. These are the most common types of product forms for color cosmetics. Powders are also used for products like baby powder or foot powder. They're just mixtures of solid raw materials blended together into a fine powdered form. Some typical ingredients include talc and silicates and starch. When making powders uh, on a manufacturing scale, special equipment is needed because the fine powder can certainly be dangerous. The next product form are gels. These are thick products, typically clear and have a property known as sheer thinning. This means they stay thick until you apply a force which makes them thin and flowable. Anyone who has tried to get ketchup out of a bottle knows what I'm talking about. Gels are used for hair products, body washes, shaving products, and in toothpaste. The gel technology is also used to help stabilize things like emulsions. They are made by using a gelling agent such as an acrylic polymer, a natural gum, or a cellulosic thickener. Form number nine are sticks. Sometimes you need to create a product that consumers won't necessarily want to touch, for example, lipsticks or underarm deodorant. In these cases, you'll use a stick form. Sticks are solid delivery forms that deliver active ingredients through a rubbing action. The way you create them is using mostly materials that are solid at room temperature. The ingredients are heated until they melt, mixed together, and poured into either a mold or the final container. When they cool, they take the shape of their packaging. The last product form is aerosols. Aerosols are more of a packaging product form than a specific formulation type. In fact, you could actually create an aerosol out of almost any product cosmetic formulation as we've discussed, if you have the right can, the propellant, and the nozzle setup. Aerosols are cosmetics delivered from a pressurized can. They are composed of a concentrate and a propellant. You first make the formula as you would any other cosmetic, then you fill it into the can. You can then seal the can and pressurize it using an appropriate propellant. Now VOC, uh, which is Volatile Organic Compound Regulations, uh, have really reduced the use of aerosols in cosmetic products, but you still find them in uh, a number of types of different products, including sunscreens and still uh, antiperspirant sprays. So there you have it. That is the 10 types of cosmetic formulations that are used to make pretty much every kind of cosmetic you can think of. And learning how to make those cosmetic formulations is really the goal of our upcoming uh, course, Practical Cosmetic Formulations. So if you are interested in learning how to make these types of cosmetic products, then this course is for you. It's a nine module course, which actually has some bonus modules to get you up to speed. And it's taken over the course of the next five months. So if you're interested, feel free to click on the button below and join the course. I'm Perry Romanowski and thank you for watching this video. Oh yes, the trick. This actually was the one that landed me on The Tonight Show. Thanks for watching and I look forward to working with you in the future.